The coronavirus is not the flu. There is nothing in the flu vaccine to help you with coronavirus. Just because we've seen a lot of news stories about it shouldn't indicate the amount of panic. But I do think it's a great time to talk about how to be prepared for when you do get a viral or bacterial infection. Ready to live at the higher vibrations where peace, love, joy, and good health are the daily standard? That's what this show is all about. Welcome to Vibe. And here's your host, Robin Openshaw. Hey everybody, Robin Openshaw here. I hope everybody's healthy in your world. Uh, It's still winter. It'll still be winter for a while. And I thought I'd do an episode on what I do that causes me to really not fear the coronavirus or actually viral and bacterial infections in general. There's just been so much talk about getting sick this winter. There's a lot of uh, people very scared of the coronavirus. Uh, John and I just went on a little five night trip to um, Cancun and I probably saw 20 or 30 people wearing masks in the airport, which is interesting because they probably think that the mask is keeping them from getting germs. It's actually totally useless for not getting germs. You can get an airtight um, mask to where it's going to cost you more and it's not the little thing that doctors wear. What those things that you use, a you know, the rubber band straps it to the back of your head. What those are for is, is if a doctor or a nurse is seeing patients, it keeps them from infecting other people. That's really all that's good for, by the way. But if, you, if you're listening to this and it's later than this uh, right now mass hysteria about the coronavirus, still really listen to this episode because I'm going to talk about some really important things related to your immune function and why you shouldn't need to be so afraid of flu and viruses. And I'm not saying that like, you know, don't take precautions. I'm saying let's put the the risk here in in perspective. Uh, once in a while, and actually fairly often, and this winter is one of those once in a while's here, uh, first part of 2020 is when I'm recording this, a big virus comes around and a lot of people do news stories on it. And so then the effect on you as the person uh, in, you know, the consumer of the media is that once you've seen half a dozen news stories, then you assume that there's a a major clear and present danger to your own own personal health. And it might not actually um, be true. First of all, I'd like to remind you of uh, just the history in the last like less than 15 years. Remember... Uh, 2002, West Nile virus was going to kill us all. Uh, remember 2005 when bird flu? Uh, you, you had people out there who wanted media time saying that bird flu was going to kill us all. Then in 2009, just a few years later, swine flu is going to kill us all. Um, Ebola in 2014. Uh, 2015, Disney measles, you know, that, that Disney outbreak. And then 2016, I don't know how you, you say it. Is it Zika? Zika? So, you know, and last year, all the rage was about measles, which, you know, killed no one really in the U.S. There, there, I think there might've been one measles death in the U.S., but it sure makes for a good, for a really good news story. And so let me just give you a couple of statistics here. This is from Live Science. But the new coronavirus, which you are probably aware has been called COVID-19, it's led to 75,000 people getting sick and a little over 2,000 deaths at this point. It's the end of February right now, 2020. And it's absolutely nothing compared with the flu, okay, or the strains of influenza that went through um, have gone through the country and the world this winter. I asked my friend, Dr. Elisa Song, who has been um, a guest here on the show. She is a holistic leaning, but regular traditional pediatrician. I asked her, hey, the four strains that they put in the flu vaccine, how are they lining up this year with the strains that are actually showing up in the population? She said this year, they're about about half, a half match. So that means that two of the four strains in there even showed up in the population. And she said, and by the way, that doesn't tell the whole story because, you know, the efficacy is only about 40 to 60%. So 
Um, you've probably figured out that I'm not a huge fan of the specifically the flu vaccine. And that's because I know quite a bit about its actual track record and also published studies about how um, when you get the flu vaccine, you are massively more likely to get uh, infections and viruses of, of another nature. And, you know, nobody's exactly sure why, but I think that the obvious hypothesis is when you inject yourself with all of these different kinds of dead bacteria, metals, and lots of chemical adjuvants, it, it really takes a lot for your immune system to process that. So your immune system is just lower. Your immune system is struggling with all the additional things you're injected with. So I decided to do this uh, episode when somebody shared a screenshot with me of the New York Times saying how to prepare for the coronavirus. And there's just a few bullets. And one of them was get the flu vaccine. So I just want to point out that the coronavirus is not the flu. There is nothing in the flu vaccine to help you with coronavirus. When I posted this on my personal Facebook page, somebody said, yeah, but it's protecting you from getting both the coronavirus and the flu at once. Now, first of all, I think you probably have about the same um, likelihood of that happening as you do a meteor hitting you before bed tonight. Um, but also, uh, it, that's not actually true. There are, uh, and we'll have it in the show notes if you want to take a look at a published study that shows that you're much more likely to get other viruses and bacterial infections if you've had the flu shot. So just back to a couple of reference points, just to put coronavirus in context, I said there are 75,000 people who've gotten sick from coronavirus and just over 2,000 deaths. But let's point out that um, the flu has gotten 26 million people sick. So 75,000 coronavirus, 26 million the flu. There have been a quarter of a million hospitalizations and 14,000 deaths, according to the CDC. So 14,000 deaths from the flu compared to 2,000 deaths from coronavirus. I mean, that's literally seven times more people uh, who've uh, died of the flu. And Reuters says that at least one in five people worldwide were infected with the swine flu during that 2009-2010 H1N1 pandemic. Remember that? One in five people worldwide were infected with it, but the death rate was 0.02%. And uh, if if you're willing to give New York Times another shot at saying something credible, uh, you have a one in 103 chance or a 1% chance of dying in a car crash, right? That doesn't keep us from going anywhere in our car. So even that pandemic, when a lot of people actually did get the swine flu, one in five people worldwide, the death rate was 0.02%. Okay, so literally 200, you have a 200 times higher likelihood of dying in a car accident uh, than you did of, of actually dying of the swine flu. So just, I say all that, not to say, you know, don't worry about it, take no precautions whatsoever. Um, but I, I do just want to point out that just because we've seen a lot of news stories about it um, shouldn't indicate the amount of panic that we should actually go through. But I do think it's a great time to talk about one of the subjects that I'm most passionate about educating people about, and that is how to be prepared for when you do get a viral or bacterial infection, because everybody gets sick now and then. So let's talk about some some practical tips about how to avoid getting coronavirus and also what to do if you do become ill. Okay, so I have a number of things I'd like to just tick through, and every single one of these is super powerful. One of them is, this is a great resource that we built that has been super popular, is that my grandmother had this recipe. Sometimes we call it hot lemonade. Sometimes we call it my my grandmother's magical elixir. We have a few different names for it. But I've posted it online and it's it's been not only really popular, but people actually enjoy drinking it. And when you have this made in advance, and I highly recommend that after you you hear this, you go get this this recipe and it'll be a link in the show notes, or you can just write down greensmoothiegirl.com slash hot lemonade. 
A-I-D at the end. That's how we spelled lemonade. Greensmithygirl.com slash hot lemonade. And it has like seven ingredients in here. Every single one of them is either a stimulant for immune function or it has uh, more of a mechanism of directly killing bacterial and viral cells. And so just to tell you what it is, you put four cups of hot water, not boiling water because you're going to kill enzymes in, for instance, the raw honey, but four cups hot water, a quarter of a cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Okay. Or if you don't want to squeeze it, if you don't have a little citrus juicer, you could literally just cut most of the peel off and blend the entire lemon into the water. Just cut it in chunks and blend it. If you've got a Vitamix or a Blendtec, two tablespoons of raw honey, and the honey isn't a, just a sweetener here. Okay. Raw honey is very antibacterial. So having it be local raw honey, you should always have that on hand anyways. It's just a great tool in your holistic um, pantry because it's great for burns. Amazing for burns. I once had second degree burns all over my arm because a friend asked me to help her make gravy and I poured boiling hot, um, you know, the juices from whatever she was cooking, the roast out of her oven and I turned on the blender and it blew and it just went all over me and I had no scarring from that after I just covered my whole arm with raw honey when I got home a couple hours later, wrapped it up with an ace bandage is awesome. So boiling water, fresh squeeze or not boiling water, hot water, fresh squeeze lemon juice, two tablespoons of raw honey, um, an inch of fresh ginger root that you peel, a quarter of a cup raw apple cider vinegar, Again, the raw is important. Bragg's is a good brand there. It has the mother in it and it's a living raw, really a superfood. And then cayenne pepper. Okay. And there's different heat units in different cayenne pepper, but you know, I use the good stuff and you want to use as much as you can tolerate. So uh, be liberal with the cayenne pepper if you're willing to. And then two cloves of fresh garlic. Okay, so you blend all that stuff up and don't worry too much about the amounts. You could add more lemon juice than that if you want to. I add I add a lot more than that just because I love the taste of the lemon juice. And then blend it up really well. And then you know what? Pour these in pint jars, put lids on them and freeze them. And make sure you put a label on it that says antiviral tonic or whatever you want to call it. So when you go to use it, it is going to be when your little one comes to you and says mommy, my throat hurts or my head hurts or they're lying around acting sluggish. As soon as you see those first um, symptoms come on or if, or if it's for you or an older child, you know, I've really trained my kids. Like, don't tell me that you're sick two days in. Okay. If you need help, tell me right away. As soon as you start feeling it, come on, because these little tricks that I'm telling you about, they work. Okay. These natural remedies, many of them are tested and, you know, are scientifically proven to have a beneficial effect to help you get well if you're sick. And in many cases, it as, you know, this bacterial infection is maybe starting to proliferate in your body, it can help you get on top of it, can help your immune system get on top of it. So you never really go down for the count. You never really get very sick. I cannot even count how many times I've been able to knock something down right as the symptoms are coming on. And then I use my grandmother's magical elixir, maybe some of the other things that we're talking about here. But if you have them in the freezer, okay, and you don't need a ton, but just one cup in pint jars, then it'll give you some peace of mind. But then when you feel those first symptoms coming on, remember, there's no way that you're going to want to get in your car and drive to the health food store. If your little one is sick, or if you're feeling crappy, you know what you'll do is you'll say, oh yeah, I'll do that as soon as I take a nap. All you care about is you want to lie down, you take a nap, you wake up four hours later and now that bacterial infection really um, has control and you got fever and chills. You're not going to go to the health food store. So I can't overemphasize. I talk about this a lot and I'm going to tell you about a, a very viral video that I made and I'll point you to that as well. It'll be in the show notes of um, talking about these supplements that I have on hand and having this antiviral on hand. Now, don't microwave it. If you get it out of the freezer because you feel a sore throat coming on, or you're starting to feel that headachey, weak um, feeling coming on, get the pint jar out of the freezer and put it in a pot of hot water, okay? And it'll just thaw some of it. You don't have to thaw all of it at once. You know, it'll give you a few um, doses. 
but you don't want to microwave it because again, you're killing nutrients. You're, you're especially killing all of the enzymes when you heat it on the stove or heat it in a microwave. So just put it in a, in a pan of hot water and in 10 minutes, you'll have it ready enough of it that you can go ahead and drink it. All right. So I told you about where to get the hot lemonade recipe, greensmoothiegirl.com slash hot lemonade. But also in the show notes, I will link you to probably the most popular resource I've ever made. And what it is, is a list of the seven supplements that I have on hand. Um, And I'm going to go through what they are. So you can certainly write them down right now, but you're going to kind of want to go get this anyway, because I'll show you where I actually get them, which brand um, I like best. And in some cases, it's like, yeah, get whatever brand that you want. But I'll tell you what I specifically like about some of these brands. So the first one you have on hand is beta-glucan. There are literally hundreds of studies showing that uh, taking beta-glucan will strengthen your immune system. My son and I took it when we wanted to get a cat. And we're both allergic to cats. And I had read that it has a really great effect for people who have mild cat allergies. And it certainly did help us. And we've been a cat owner now for several years. And by the way, beta-glucan is the one of all these that you can literally just take it all the time. It's not a really cheap supplement, especially not the brand that I really like that works for us and that, you know, caused us to be able to have a cat. You know, I'm of course kind of loyal to that brand because it actually really worked for us in some very special ways. Um, But that's, it's kind of expensive, but you can take this year round. These other ones you want to take for a week, maybe two weeks, and then you want to cycle off of them. But I don't have a problem with these other six. Maybe you take them for a week or two weeks, a couple of times in the winter, just to strengthen your immune system because we're all being exposed to viruses all winter long. And whether we get them or not is purely a function of of whether our immune system is strong. One of the things that makes your immune system strong is if you don't have a lot of assaults on your immune system right? If uh, the other thing is, are you eating a healthy diet and you're generally, you know, oxygenated well and slightly alkaline, okay? When you're acidic, when you have very little uh, oxygenation going on because you're not drinking your green juice or your green smoothies and you're not exercising, you are far more at risk to get a viral or bacterial thing. The number two supplement is vitamin C. And I have something very important to say about this. You could go listen to episode 94 with my colleague, Dr. David Friedman, about this in more detail if you want. But Cliff's notes is that most vitamin C that's being sold out there is pretty much garbage. It's ascorbic acid and it's used by using hydrochloric acid with high fructose corn syrup. So do you really want to take a vitamin C that's a derivative of corn syrup? It's not likely to do you much good, if any, and it actually could be quite toxic. So in this list that you can click on the link in the show notes, if you want to just go get these seven supplements, um, I do not sell these supplements. I'm just showing you the brands that I like. Um, I give you my favorite brand of vitamin C because it's all, um, it's like six or seven different very high vitamin C superfoods is what that supplement is rather than ascorbic acid. So it's made from like amla berry and uh, camu camu and I think elderberry, um, probably some rose hips. So I love that and I have it on hand and I take it immediately if I feel any symptoms coming on. Number three, you've got to have zinc to have a strong immune system. So having some zinc lozenges are um, great. That's a great thing to do once you get sick, but you may also want to supplement with a good zinc supplement. I like the pure brand, pure encapsulations brand is what I take um, orally. And I don't just take it when I get sick, but zinc lozenges are great for your throat. If you have a cough, if you have a sore throat, number four, colloidal silver. And I really, I have a favorite brand because they uh, break down the silver particles into nanoparticles. So you're just going to get a lot more surface area kill by literally a multiplier effect, something something like a hundred times more surface area that just spray it under your tongue like 10 times and do this every hour or two as you feel symptoms coming on and the whole time that you're sick. Um... I I really think it's important to have a really great colloidal silver on hand and use it immediately when you start to feel it coming on. But 
But colloidal silver is very well documented to kill even very difficult um, viral and bacterial stuff like MRSA. Number five, golden seal. I'm partial to this herb because I grew up taking antibiotics several times a year. I constantly got strep throat and I would get well and it seems like I just turn around and get strep throat again. And I don't think my mother was educated on the subject to know that the antibiotics themselves were probably a lot of why I kept getting sick. Um, but I got strep throat when I was 27 and pregnant with my second child. And I was like, I am not going to go get on antibiotics. By then I was more educated. I didn't want to be on antibiotics. I'd rather be sick for a month than be on antibiotics then and now, but especially pregnant. I didn't want to do it. So I took golden seal, which is a really good antibacterial herb and it worked. And I've never had strep since then. I'm pretty much permanently positive for strep. Like I remember they did like a vaginal swab when I was giving birth and they came running in saying, you have strep. And I said, no, I don't. I'm just permanently positive for strep. It's in my body, but my immune system um, stays on top of it. It's probably permanently in my body um, or at least up until the last time that I was tested, which tested, which is when I was having a baby. So, you know, maybe I'm not still, but for years and years and years, any strep test would come back positive. However, I wasn't sick. So that's a good sign. So golden seal is a great herb to have on hand. And number six, kyolic garlic, a number of different brands you can get at your health food store, or, you know, I think the one that I link you to is a, is an organic one. Get organic if you can. And kyolic garlic releases lower in your intestines. It's not going to, um, give you garlic breath or anything. And then number seven, oregano oil. You got to be really careful. And I, you know, I'm a big fan of organic um, essential oils. So I think that oregano oil is extremely powerful and it'll really knock down uh, viral stuff, not just bacterial stuff. And you know, the thing is this antibiotics, you got to realize the vast majority of when we get sick, it's viral, not bacterial. And antibiotics don't work, don't work on viruses. And some of these natural supplements do. So uh, got a symptom, take some of these supplements to have on hand. Now with oregano oil, you want to have food in your stomach and you want to have gel caps because if you put a drop of oregano oil on the back of your hand, that's going to burn. Uh, you're going to probably feel nauseous after it goes down. But worst of all is the taste is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. So if you have little gel caps and you can just put a, put one to two drops of oregano oil in and take it, uh, very powerful, but please don't just lick the oregano oil. I warned you. So I made this video, I want to say four years ago, and we'll put a link to it in the, the show notes. It's not long. It's five, six, seven minutes at the most. And I tell a story of when my older daughter, Emma, was in college and she um, texted me, mom, I'm dying. And I tell you what I did because I didn't want her on an antibiotic, but she had not told me she was sick until it was day four. She's, she was three hours away at college. And um, this might be our most watched video ever. For sure, it's like top three. I just looked at it and it has two and a half million views, 36,000 shares, um, like 9,000 comments on it. And, you know, in it, I talk about these seven supplements that I've just listed for you. Um, but I, I talk about how I dealt with the doctor. I made her go to the student health clinic because at this point she was passing out in the shower. She hadn't eaten in a few days. She said her, her, throat was so swollen, she couldn't swallow. And you know, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, get the girl on an antibiotic. And I would agree with you when it's that, uh, you know, it's really gotten in the whole upper hand. I would agree with you if it were a bacterial infection, but I don't want the almost guaranteed and often very significant long-term negative effects of the antibiotic, unless I know there's an actual bacterial infection that it can work on. So you know, I want to do want to make sure that you know that I would give my child an antibiotic, um, but it's going to be very rare. I have not given any of my children an antibiotic in the last 25 years. And partly it's because, I, you know, they don't get super ill um, often anymore. This thing that happened with Emma five years ago that I tell the story in this super viral video 
uh, is the last time one of my children got very sick. But what this taught me besides, and I, and I go through in the video, I won't, I won't go into detail, but I go through how I talk to this doctor because I don't want to insult the doctor. I don't want to say something to the doctor that implies that his work is not valuable or that I'm, you know, I mistrust him or whatever. So I talk about how I sort of enlist him, you know, in helping my daughter. And I point out that I'm aware that most infections are viral and I don't want to give her an antibiotic unless he can do some tests and tell me that it's bacterial. And so I made him do the test. He wanted, I told my daughter, I said, you're going to go there and he's going to want to send you out the door with an antibiotic. Um, but you know, we're, we're overdoing it vast majority of the time and taking way too much risk the vast majority of the time that we just take an antibiotic, hoping that it's bacterial. Okay. Because if it's not, you just wiped out most of the good bacteria in your gut and you had no chance of it helping you feel better. So one of the things that I learned, and I will tell this story as long as anyone will listen, is to not wait until you get sick to have these supplements in place. So definitely get my list of seven. And if you have children who live away from home, or maybe you have a child who would really like to be healthy and, and you know, agrees with you in the way that you approach health and wellness, if you're more holistic leaning like me, um, but maybe they can't afford the supplements. This is a great Christmas gift. This is a great birthday gift. It's it's so thoughtful because you can put it in a pretty box. Um, I just have for all four of my kids after this happened, I got a gallon Ziploc bag and I wrote on it antiviral supplements. Take immediately when you feel symptoms. So I wrote that on the gallon freezer bag with a Sharpie marker and so then all of my kids had these seven supplements on hand. And if they ever text me that they're not feeling well, I say, do you have your supplements? And, and when they move, I say, do you have your supplements handy? Are they where you can get to them closely? Because remember, when you feel the symptoms coming on, you're not going to go on Amazon and start ordering supplements and wait two days for, for them to come. By then, that infection could be quite entrenched. Okay. So those are some of the resources for you. Please, please, please go to the show notes and um, look this up. Get get these supplements in hand. It'll really give you peace of mind. It'll, it's money well spent to just get these uh, supplements so that you know you have a game plan when you or someone in your family gets sick. Because if you get on it early and you can knock this thing down naturally, you might be avoiding some courses of antibiotics where you're going to end up with gut problems for potentially years um, is the result for many people who take antibiotics. Okay, but I've saved the best for last. Okay, this is last but not least. It's not on the list because this isn't something that you take when you get the virus. This is a supplement that most of us should actually be taking every day. Um, I consider it one of the most important supplements you can possibly take unless you live in Southern California or Florida, um, and you're getting outside every day, some people like that will have optimal levels of vitamin D. Vitamin D isn't really like the other vitamins. It's um, more kind of a hormone than a vitamin, but optimal levels of vitamin D are more correlated to a strong immune system and resistance to infectious disease than any other thing. Hundreds and hundreds of published studies show that if you have enough vitamin D, and guess what? Almost nobody does, especially people living in North America, especially fair-skinned people. If you have enough vitamin D in the optimal range, which is between 100 and 170, um, then you're not going to be the one that gets sick. If you do get sick, it'll be a sniffle for you. Guess what? Most of the people who get the coronavirus, it is no big deal. Little fever, a um, couple days, and they're much better. It's very few people who are getting the coronavirus who get very, very, very sick. And the vast majority of them are the elderly. There have been no deaths of children nine and under of the coronavirus. So again, just a little bit of context there. So again, getting enough vitamin D is probably the most powerful thing you can do to avoid getting sick with viral and bacterial stuff in the first place, or if you do get something to be able to sail through it and not end up on antibiotics or not end up in the hospital. So my own doctor, 
I don't have a doctor here in the U.S. because I really haven't had a need for one, thankfully. But Dr. Petra Vigel, who runs the clinic, she's clinical director at Swiss Mountain Clinic, that I hope you're coming with me to uh, May 23rd for two weeks. She said this when we we asked her, um, I wanted to know how to get your vitamin D levels up. I wanted to know, does taking supplements actually get your vitamin D levels up? And I actually asked that on a page with a thousand uh, functional medicine doctor colleagues as well. So I'll share with you. I'll give you the um, link to the brand that one of my colleagues on that private Facebook page of functional medicine doctors told me that she has seen over and over again that really gets people's vitamin D levels up. Um, But Dr. Petra said a high dose of vitamin D can very quickly lead to a normal level. According to the current vitamin D level, uh, if necessary, you can get acute injections of up to 300,000 IU, IU means international units, So you can be injected if you have a functional medicine doctor, call him or her and ask if they do vitamin D injections. That might be a good idea if you're going to be traveling, if you have a compromised immune function or both of those things, or you know that you have low D, uh, you can get an, an intramuscular injection. Or you can orally take 4,000 to 10,000 IU daily. So make sure you write that down. Take 4,000 to 10,000 international units daily. That's a lot, by the way. Um, Once you're in the healthy zone, you don't need to be taking that much. Um, But again, you're looking for values of 100 to 170. That's the ideal range. And the units of measure is N mol slash L per liter. And I'm not sure what that is. N O M O L slash L. 100 to 170 of those. And then Dr. Petra says, take 100 milligrams of vitamin K2 with it. I actually get on Amazon um, vitamin D2 plus K3 as one supplement, but just make sure you're getting the right amounts because you probably have to take a bunch of those when they're combined into one supplement. So another thing that Dr. Petra told us when we reached out to her, because we had some people that were you know, worried about months from now going on their Swiss mountain clinic liver detox retreat with me. And, you know, and one even canceled because of coronavirus. I hope you understand how um, overreactive that is to the actual threat out there. Um, And of course you can get trip insurance as well if you're worried about it. But Dr. Petra also said to us that if you want a vigilant, strong immune system is to absolutely switch off a Wi-Fi at night and use it only in doses during the day. And she said that they're at the clinic, they've done some scientific studies measuring the activity of leukocytes, which are white blood cells. Okay, so this would be a major biomarker of how strong your immune function is. And she did that before and after Wi-Fi exposure. And she said that the difference was really dramatic of the fact that your white blood cells are very affected by those chaotic frequencies coming from Wi-Fi. So my Wi-Fi is going off as soon as we're done doing podcasting today. She also wants us to know, Dr. Petra wants us to know that our immune system is dependent on a sufficient zinc level, which I already mentioned. So you can get your zinc level measured, but for sure, take your ultimate minerals. Green Smoothie Girl's ultimate minerals are our number one most reordered product, but keeping those mineral levels up, including zinc, is really important. So make sure that you're using your ultimate minerals twice a day. 70% of your cells contain zinc and depend on zinc. So again, in the show notes, I put a link to the vitamin D that my colleague told me that she has seen really good results in quickly bringing up people's vitamin D levels. You can check that out. You can check out what we call the Emma video, which is that, uh, you know, video that 36,000 people have shared on Facebook talking about what I do to keep my kids off of antibiotics and what they all have on hand now that gives me peace of mind and how I talked to the doctor when she was sick and I sent her into the student health center. Uh, That little video is also in the show notes. So just to wrap up, if I'm putting this in the shortest Cliff's Notes possible, make sure that your zinc and vitamin D levels are strong. It wouldn't be a bad idea to take those throughout the winter. 
And remember that you may want to take some vitamin K as well because vitamin D is absorbed uh, well only if you also have enough vitamin K. Get a really good vitamin C made from whole foods, not ascorbic acid, and get the silver that I recommend. It's called ACS. And we give you a link to all of that. Um, do those things at a bare minimum. I also like the antibacterial and viral essential oils. Probably the most powerful one is the oregano oil, but you have to put a drop or two of it in a little in a little gel cap. You can also buy them just in the gel caps from the health food store. So I hope this was useful to you. This isn't something to listen to and think I'll do this later. This is something to take action on right now so that you've got yourself a little uh, care package and think who in your life would be well served by having a care package like that. So don't be afraid of the coronavirus. Um, wash your hands, drink lots of water, do all that good stuff. Make sure you're drinking your green juice. Nothing's better for alkalizing and oxygenating. Um, but again, don't panic and I'll see you next time. 